great. Thank you all for coming. This will be great fun. Um, as you know, we've, uh, we've been doing for uh, August was our Cat's Meow show. Um, uh, the follow-up to our Dog Days of Summer from last year, uh, in which we had the Baroni's large pieces and sculptures and uh, work by all sorts of wonderful artists. Uh, we continued, I, I last, or two weeks ago, showed a lot of the, um, the pieces entered. Uh, this week, I'm going to show a couple of my pieces uh, and discuss how animals have inspired me. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go on to the Karen and Tony Baroni's uh, art adventure across the Coachella Valley. So we'll, we'll get going with uh, a couple of my pieces. Let's find the screen sharing button. Go here. Come on. There. There. Nice. <laughs> there we go. And then we'll start with El Jefe. Now, um, just to give, uh, I mean, a lot of these were shown at the UCR show uh, last year, and I've had them on display. They're made out of craft sticks. Uh, not popsicle sticks. I did not eat that many popsicles to create these. Uh, but you can buy them by the thousands at Michael's. Um, but I started this whole uh, series, these animals, um, based on um, creating a new, for a better term, religion. Uh, these are my teachers. These are what I learned from. And so the animals kind of give me, uh, uh, they, they just teach me. I learn different things from them. For example, the El Jefe here, uh, buffaloes um, travel in large herds and what better way to stand out than to become and learn from the buffalo itself. Um, this piece uh, stands about at least three feet tall for the, for the head and then the horns go up taller than that. Um, and then we've got Sherpa, the, the guide through the wilderness. Uh, often asked, you know, uh, when you need questions, you know, nothing better than going to a bighorn sheep uh, and, and figuring out which direction you should be going. Um, I, I'm selling both the sculpture and the photos, so I, I, I can make money off of all parts of these arts. But uh, the, these are how the, the animals affect me. Uh, Bekik, uh, I got the name. It's Afrikan for point of view. And so um, that's what, what a giraffe uh, looks for. So if I'm stuck uh, on a certain project, you can go to the giraffe and it'll say, look at it from a different angle. Uh, look at it from way up top or way down low. And so these, ins these animals help me inspire to create as well. Um, Prince Oryx. This is one of the first pieces in which I used uh, paint and got that duo toned uh, piece uh, going. Uh, then created the body piece as well as the hooves. Uh, this is a, a big piece uh, that I created. Uh, oryxes are actually uh, part of the antelope family from kind of East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula and often live alone. So I, I go to Prince Oryx when dealing with loneliness, especially during these COVID times uh, and how artists deal with with that um so the uh guardian de la pensée uh my little guardian of thoughts my little armadillo um again all of these are masks or hats you can wear them um and so this cute little guy is is there to protect your thoughts when we get all those nasty demon thoughts that a lot of us have been getting lately uh, and so just to help protect your sanity 
uh, I go to my little armadillo. Um, and so that's, that's just a little fun thing that I created that I use uh, the animals for. Uh, uh, do we have any questions or how do animals help you kind of discussion? That's a big discussion. They're a part of our life every day. They're our happiness, they're our sadness. I mean, they influence everything. I mean, we, we've been doing giant animals for a while, but those are very impressive. Thank you. They're just beautiful. And it's funny because, it, I mean, not funny, but it's interesting because uh, the element is the repetition of a very small thing, that piece of wood, that uh, popsicle stick. So from that little, little, little unit that you repeat and repeat and repeat becomes really big and interesting, but it's a repetition. So there's this harmony that runs through the whole thing. It's that, 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 that kind of like Beethoven, but it's, mm -hmm. it's just terrific. Very impressive. Thank you. Who else uses animals for inspiration for their art? Eduardo, I know you do for your, for your, uh, the pieces you were just showing us before the show. Well, um, cheap and I, I guess it's a point of departure. Um, I, I, I tend to create fantastic creatures rather than really adhering to the, to, to the to the real thing um, in these times of uh, uncertainty where reason is put into question um, it's interesting to play with fantastical uh, elements as a, a way of um, bringing together the the anguish of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this, you know, uncertainty um, has been a blessing in many ways for us in that, uh, and we use an animal to describe the condition. Uh, we, we use models uh, uh, to determine something. You know, there's the Warhol model for uh, this or that, and and this particular period of our time, we call the uh, Brer Rabbit and the Briar Patch model. So uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, uh, old enough to remember Brer Rabbit. You all look pretty young to me, but uh, uh, Brer Rabbit, you know, was being taunted by Brer Fox and Brer Bear, and they were going to just beat the crap out of him. And he says, you know, he turned around and says, please, please do anything you want to me, but don't throw me in that darn briar patch. And so that's what we're doing. It's uh, please, governor, don't, don't make us stay home in our studio. Please don't make us stay home in our studio. Do the thing we love to do most and be with the person we love the most. Don't do that to us. So I think it's all how you look at it. And, uh, we produce some of our, I think, best work ever because of the, who's the, the who's the writer, the Colombian writer? Uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Say it again. Gabriel Garcia Marquez. <laughs> he said an uh, uh, artist should live on a, a desert island during the day to, so that that artist could do his, his or her work and then they go out into the center of life. And we used to do that. So we're in that, that, uh, that desert island phase now for six or so months. And then later we'll go out and celebrate what we accomplished during that period. So, uh, but one of the things uh, that we've done is the, this app that you were mentioning and talking about. 
Yeah, he hasn't introduced it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's no. let's let's talk about your app. But we'll just we'll just slide right into it. Okay, sounds good. What took place with that? We happen to be in the middle, I would say, of a documentary that's being done on Tony and I full length by two really tech geniuses. And it came to them that one of the things that we should do or could do was an app that would take everyone on an art tour of they, Karen and Tony Baroni's Coachella Valley, 26 sculpture, 19 location. They were <laughs> acutely aware that the museums were closed, the galleries were closed, and people were in, locked up in their, in their homes, but they could go into their car and still be safe. And so they developed this, this app for your phone that is a tour of the uh, a tour of the valley of our work. Go ahead. And, and, the, and the great thing about it is it offers you up maps and where to park your car and, and uh, the best route, where to go to have lunch. It was like a, let's consider everything. There was a little backstory on each of the 20 something pieces in the tour. If you take the tour in one day, it's four and a half hours. You start in you start in Palm Springs, and you end in India. India, but you could break it up. It's just very exciting. And we, of course, I had nothing to do with it, and Karen had everything to do with it because she's much smarter than I am and is more high tech. And but they put this uh, this together, and it's it, 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 tonight if you're watching uh, NBC. They're going to talk about this particular project on uh, Silver Lining with um, Sandy, Sandy Newton, Newton, NBC at it's 630. 6.30. Yeah. And, and it is a silver lining. You, 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 can have, you can smile. You can go out and have fun and even get out of your car if nobody's around and uh, take selfies. And dance with the rabbits the dogs, the cats, right. you can just enjoy yourself and share, and share it. I mean, that's part right. of life. We love, all of us love photographing things that excite us and then sharing them with family and friends. It's beyond virtual, it's interactive uh, outdoor art. Art where it comes to, you come, hello. Chica. <laughs> Chica. Chica, we, 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 did, we executed Chica. That was the second Chica. The first one is Chartreuse. This is uh, the home of the, the Haglers. They're our biggest collectors. Uh, in fact, they warned us that we had to let them know if anybody approached uh, having more work, that they wouldn't let that happen. So that was very nice. But this mm -hmm. is because she's about six and a half feet tall. Right. She's all aluminum. And she sits in the front yard, their front yard in Palm Springs. And you, you can take pictures from the it's that, very close That view is curb. from the curb. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to say, Tony and Karen, you know, they're my neighbors, so I always make sure to, on my walks with the dogs, go by their house just oh, for that's fantastic. pleasure. And this is Bodacious Big Bunny. This which the also, scale isn't revealed here. No, you really can't tell. This is big. Yeah. And the beauty of it is on Tamarisk Lane in Rancho Mirage. Very quiet. Very quiet, except for everybody walks that street. It's like the how it's like taking a trip into the mountains for a lot of people. So she, the owner of this property. It uh, gets very excited because so often people are stopping and photographing this. And I can't imagine what's going to take place now that this particular app is out yeah. and more and more people are knowing about it. This work is about 10 feet tall. The head is uh, a sphere, uh, a 42 inch, three and a half foot diameter sphere. 
So it, it's big. It, could, it can go bigger. The bigger, biggest we can go is four feet, but we're a little nervous on that. <laughs> so this was a uh, trial run on this size. And uh, fortunately, it appealed to someone immediately. And uh, here it is. And again, it's close to the curb, so it's easily. Mm -hmm. This is also a curved view. On yeah. um, Desert Heart, Desert Arc joined at the heart. This is a piece that touches me, which you could tell by my faltering every time I see it, because it was our way of letting everyone know where this amazing uh, 5013C organization that helped adults with learning. I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Desert Arc and I their cars hope. going by and they had a, that's their building behind it. And you really couldn't even see that these unbelievably, uh, unbelievably caring people uh, took care, that this was a campus for a lot of adults that uh, they, they help people over 18. Uh, and the, we rec were, yeah, and the recognition of people knowing they're there now is just amazing. Yeah. And, and it's meant so much to them that they've taken all their colors and their walls inside or the colors of the sculpture. Yeah. Their flyers are that color. And they're just uh, ecstatic about the attention they've received since this work of art it's was installed. It's changed their whole profile yes. a week. We were very moved. We're very moved by this organization. How much good they do, and how caring they are. And uh, we we donated this piece, and that was th that was a very easy decision. And uh, uh, I'm we're very proud of it. Very proud of it. Yay! Who's that? <laughs> That's great. I, I even smile. I can't look at this without being happy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're just saying the reason I sent you this particular view, which is from the back, yeah. is that people rarely see that view. And it really is as wonderful as driving by them right. in the front. So if you go into the Latin Park, right. this is what you see, you have the mountains, the terrain. Right behind Karen is 111. And for what, so, and there's, that's the, uh, the Galen Museum behind those trees. And so it's, uh, it's fun. I, I, I go there all the time. I go and pick up uh, a lunch. At Whole Foods. At Whole Foods, which it's in that, wow. it's in the, basically in the Whole Foods parking lot. And then I'll drive and I'll, I'll have this view. There are, this is only four of the nine, nine, nine rabbits that are there. <laughs> yeah, so it's less than half. Right. Yeah, How can I remember nine? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard to tell the difference between that woman there and those rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> She's just smaller. I don't have the polka dot thing. <laughs> and the nice thing that's happening we were in essence um, provided with this property by the landlord and helped along with its um, installation by the city of Palm Desert. And what's taken place is in, it had a year that was supposed to be its totality unless we discussed going on further. And I contacted the landlord just a month or two ago as well as the city and said, let's face it, a lot of people have not had the opportunity to put the smile on their faces that I know these rabbits This do. is not a permanent location, it was a year at a time. Right. But the city was very uh, supportive, Palm Desert, the city was very supportive. But I really should mention what our, one of our very first public art uh, installations, which had a profound effect on us, our life, and our, our career out here, is the Palm Springs Animal Shelter, where mm -hmm. the, the, the giant uh, Masur Pompadour, the big pink poodle, and Mademoiselle uh, Coco. the giant, giant uh, blue Siamese cat sit. Uh, that has always been a, uh, a uh, something we've been proud of. And the city acquired that 
uh, with uh, the vision of uh, Jenny Fote, Jenny but the, the Tamara is the force behind that entire organization as far as I'm concerned, and she made it all happen. And she's still making it happen. She makes a lot of things happen. Yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you, Karen and Tony. I just, um, you've done so much for, for nonprofit organizations and the community, including for the Palm Springs Animal Shelter. And, and your work is just, it's iconic. It's beautiful. It puts a smile. Even when you don't feel like smiling, you smile when you see your work. So thank you for that. Thank you. Right. The truth. So this was kind of uh, fortuitous in uh, that uh, Agam, Tamara, and myself had been planning for September to do to feature public art. Uh, and we were going to come up with our own list of places to go, murals to see all across the Coachella Valley. And then all of a sudden, your, your uh, notice shows up. And so we thought, what, what better way to start our public art um, show than with our own artists of Karen and Tony Baroni. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, no, this was great. This was lined right up with everything that we were doing. And so what, what we're going to actually ask the artists is to send in your selfies. Um, when you have time, go out to Karen and Tony's pieces, go out to all the other murals and the public art pieces, the public art benches in Palm Springs. We've got a um, even the electrical boxes that Diane Morgan paints for the city of Palm Desert. I just realized that it was Diane Morgan. She's, <laughs> I, I'm such, we're big fans of her work. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry to be to interrupt you, but I had to acknowledge her. Oh yeah, no. And, and actually for, uh, on our September 3rd, uh, tea time, we'll, we'll, uh, talk about some of the art that has come in for our theme the light and why artists live in the desert. Um, basically, September is all about our love of the desert. Uh, and then we'll continue further discussion about public art that's available to see safely from your, from your car and uh, without too many people around. So that's what our, our focus for September is going to be. So. Does anybody have any questions for Karen and Tony or myself or Mary? Mary? Yes. Can you, it's Kevin. Can yes. Can you hear me? Hey there. I just wanted to say something to Karen and Tony. My name's Kevin. I, I haven't met uh, Karen and Tony, but I wanted to tell them it's sort of interesting. Their, their work shows up at uh, serendip important moments, it seems, at least for me twice now. One was uh, a friend of ours was in the hospital, and so we uh, volunteered to walk their dogs in deep well. And we had uh, two little poodles for 19 years who sadly died this last year, but their dogs are great big uh, retrievers or something. They're big black dogs. And we would walk them by uh, their neighbor's house who had two great big Afghan uh, sculptures in the front yard of, of the Baronis. It, it was really fun. It was really fun. But on another, uh, another ad unfortunate adventure that we went on is my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer during this horrible, horrible time. And so we ended up at the cancer center at uh, Desert Regional for one of our many visits to hospitals. And uh, I was out walking. They wouldn't let me in because of COVID and he was inside. And I was walking in front of the cancer center and there was your sculptures. You know, something about angels, maybe. I can't really remember. I remember the feeling more than anything. I stood there and looked at that and felt a great sense of peace. And so it was, qu it was quite wonderful. So make, thank you for that. You're going to make us cry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The last uh, piece we did, uh, the first piece for this year, it was installed there. Again, In January, we, yeah. we, uh, we were looking for a site for something meaningful and we were actually across the street at the uh the uh, franciscan uh housing thing for cancer patients and uh just fate have it where the direct we ran into the director later that day and we had we had it wasn't moving fast enough 
So again, we donated that piece and it's called Hope. Hope. They named it, they named it and it's symbolic because it's a purple rabbit which was the symbol for recovering, cancer recovering. And then it has pink polka dots, which is a symbol it's for breast, breast cancer. cancer. I mean, it, it's just, and they use it, they use it for their annual ring the bell ceremony of where their patients, uh, uh, who have survived survivors for that years, year right. come and ring a bell. And that's done now in conjunction with Correct. the rabbit. I mean, the, the, the rewards, the payments that we have received emotionally uh, be, because being able to live in this city and be small townish where we connect, we can connect with, you know, the largest cancer center in the valley, you know, and the same thing. I mean, there's just so many opportunities to, 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 to connect with the community here. And public art is a, a great endeavor. I mean, you, you just, uh, it, 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 it just it rewards us. That, I mean, that story that you just said, my yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, perfect. and how, how is he? He's better. We ended up at UCLA for a treatment, but he's done and wow. all fingers crossed. Okay. So, but that was really, really a wonderful piece. I, I really love seeing Thank it there. You. Thank just, you. Was was absolutely perfect. So thank you. You said, um, I think Karen and Tony, that one of your intentions was to make people smile. And I tell you that I smile every time I see those rabbits. They're very very wonderful, and I thank you for that. Sorry, we do that to you. I mean, come on, you know, here you are. You know, yeah, it, I, you know, we it, a lot of artists express their worst nightmares. Uh, we don't have them. We're, and God, you know, we've been really blessed. I had great parents. Karen had great parents. There was no drugs or alcoholism in their lives or ours. And, and we found each other very early. Uh, and, and I mean, it just, we're very, very fortunate. So we don't have time for feeling bad. I mean, we feel bad and we feel things very deeply like, the story we just heard, my God, yeah. you know, but it has, it has a, a, an ending and we've done something, uh, done something. That's something we can do. A lot of things we have no power whatsoever. We're, we're as artists often powerless, but as artists, we're also very powerful. And, and our art <laughs> is, uh, can be, is very, very valuable. There, there are people, with millions of dollars who cannot accomplish what we as artists, I'm talking about all of us, can accomplish with a pencil. And that's not writing checks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other announcements, questions? Good. So you have until Sunday. Elaine, Terry, oh. Elaine was waving. Elaine, did you have a question? You're muted. There. Um, I went to the Apple store or the Apple apps and to find their um, app and I couldn't find it. So I'm going to ask again, where do I find it? Veroniart.com. It's at our website. And it's free. Okay. You know? okay. We, 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 Yep, it just came out yesterday, and so uh, someone else had recommended that we get it on the app store. Uh, that's beyond us. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're going to mention it to these filmmakers uh, who created created John and Mary Orland. God, what a blessing they they brought to us. They they came here, moved here two years ago, and they have unbelievable credentials, and we've spent so much of our life with them. Uh, in fact, this today, yeah, today's his, his birthday. Yeah, but it's constant. It's constant. And uh, they were doing a drone, a drone yeah. uh, filming of the rabbits, but had to call it off because that's Twice, when, yeah. that's when the uh, COVID, COVID 
thing hit and uh, they had to, couldn't do it. But there, we'll bring it up to them and see if that, uh, if we can do that. If it's popular enough, I think that could happen. So uh, hopefully. Well, right now, Veronica but thank you for out. thank you for doing. Thank you, it. thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I just thought, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> yeah, veroniart.com Veroni and it pops down. Just uh, a minute ago, Terry, you had put up on the screen uh, an image of the app. Right. And there was a small square thing that actually, just now, I did it with my phone, you know, scanned it with my phone, and I got the app on the phone. So maybe that's the best way to get it. Let's see. I can do this. Look at this technology. Right. right. If you scan this thing, whatever you call it, QR code, yes. you'll get it on your phone. You're beautifully high tech, my <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, that does work. Yeah, works. Good. It was nice. Oh, that was brilliant. So yeah. we when somebody calls us, we could put that up on the you know, or we, never mind. <laughs> it's beyond it's my pay, beyond my pay. Fast. That took me less than ten seconds. That's great. Good, good. Good. And remember, you have four and a half hours you have to commit if you want to give 10 minutes to the sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So you have until Sunday to get your art in for the our Love of the Desert show that we'll start talking about on Thursday, September 3rd. I want to thank my very special guests, Karen and Tony Baroni, for being with yeah. us today. Yay. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. It really was a Agreed. Pleasure. Thank you. It's really a pleasure. I mean, we haven't t spoken to hardly anyone. And no. having all, all of you here, and like this has been really a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of fun. Thank you. And let's all do it together. Every, every other Thursday, we're here. So. <laughs> okay. Yep. And thanks to Tamara and Agam and Lauren and my, my, my peeps over at UCR Palm Desert for helping make all this happen. Thank you.